Good afternoon, everyone. How, how's everyone doing today? Everyone doing well? Welcome. Welcome to a session about building force.com apps with Heroku. So uh, you all may be familiar with Heroku, you may not. Heroku, uh, as a part of our platform, provides a couple of things. You probably are aware of the fact that it lets you write code in lots of different languages. Polyglot platform, so you can use Java or Node or Scala or a variety of other languages uh, to write your application logic. Heroku also provides a great tool chain for managing that application once you've got it built. And did everyone see the DX, Salesforce DX presentations earlier? Everyone, anyone not excited about Salesforce DX? I will come down there and I will talk to you. So Salesforce DX is going, we we're very jealous of the, the wonderful tools that Heroku had and we are gonna talk about how we're gonna take those tools and incorporate them into you building applications on the force.com platform. So this is a matter of taking the best of all the different properties we have and trying to combine them so that you can use the most, uh, the best tools that we have available uh, to do the work that you need to do. So before I go any farther, as always, I'm required, I think I'm required to, to say this. I'm gonna make some forward-looking statements. I'm gonna talk about some things we're going to do. So please make any purchasing decisions that you're going to make based on currently publicly available information on the website. So before I go anywhere, I wanna make sure uh, everyone has a, a basic understanding of what Heroku is. So first I'm gonna say, what is a Heroku app? Uh, it's a definition, app is a very overloaded term. I'm gonna use it again, so I wanted to find it here to make sure everyone understands what we're talking about. A Heroku app is a container that holds all the parts of your Heroku application. So if you've got a, uh, a web service that serves up some sort of information and a user interface that's built in a different language and you've got an add-on that connects to something else, these are all gonna be part of an application, a, a Heroku app, excuse me. So it could have a dyno that's running a Java uh, web service. It could have that Node.js web application also running in a dyno. You could have a database running in Postgres, and you could have some add-ons for uh, some uh, third-party vendors, and all these together are gonna be defined as a single Heroku app. It's the whole container. What's great about this thing is it's easily replicated. What that means in practice is I can have an app that I'm using as my production app in North America. I can have another identical app that's my production app in Asia. And a third that's identical, that's my production app in Europe. And it's gonna scale out like that. I can have yet another app that's being used as a staging environment, a shared environment for people to work together. I can have another replicated app that's being used for development purposes. So these apps are, are, are easy to, uh, to, to create multiple copies and uh, use them for whatever purpose it is that you need them for. And the place we manage these is a Heroku dashboard. So, as long as the uh, finger swipe on the Mac works, I'm going to take you to that right now. So this here is the Heroku dashboard. It gives you a list of all the different apps that you've got. So uh, for my team, this is the variety of apps I have. You see some of them are grouped together, the little grouping here. A little purple hexagon is an app. It's the, uh, the icon for it. And I can go into some of these here and I can take a peek. Uh, which one's got, no, I don't wanna go there. I want to go, I want to load. I want to never rely on Wi-Fi here at the, uh, there we go. So if I pop into this guy here, we can see some uh, information about it. What do we have here? We've got some uh, installed add-ons. So I've got an add-on here for Salesforce. I've got dyno formations. This means I've got a, a couple of different dynos that are running different things. And on the right-hand side, you can see I've got my latest activity. So this is where I manage all the people that are working on this application, uh, what's running inside the application bundle. This is the, the user interface where I'm going to be able to do all my settings and make sure I'm, I'm managing my apps correctly. This is the Heroku app. It's important to have this as grounding for, for where we're gonna go next. It is a complete container of all of the elements that are necessary to run your Heroku application. Back to the presentation. Does it work? No. Man. All right, so how, what are the different, I've started to allude to some of these, but what are the different ways that you're gonna use these Heroku apps? So the primary way you're going to use it is going to be, that change made everything go sideways. I gotta click now. Production application. This is where that application is being used by all of your users. Staging application, a place that you're using before you deploy to production to make sure that your deployment to production is going to work, sort of a safety valve. Uh, a shared application where product managers and business users are gonna uh, look at the application or where developers are gonna do code review on the application before it moves into the next level of your, uh, of your repository. And review applications. Now these ones are really neat. Uh, review applications are something that we're gonna spin up on every single check-in. We can run our continuous integration test on these applications. We can have anybody 
log into it before we've merged this with our, our main branch so that everybody has a chance to look at the particular application uh, before, the particular change, sorry, before we put it into our app. Any changes that we don't want in the app, this gives everyone a place to look at them before they're part of the main code line. There's a lot of different ways to use apps, a lot of things we could do, so how are we gonna do that? We've got a tool called Pipelines. Pipelines is a wonderful user interface, part of Heroku, that lets you organize the flow of your deployment. So you're gonna have this crazy branching structure where you've got developers at the tail end of it, and their things are merging together into feature branches, and the feature branches are merging together into some sort of integration staging branch, and those are merging up into master. We've got a user interface that we can use, that, that, that Heroku developers make use of, we're gonna be able to apply through Salesforce DX to force.com development. So let's go take a look at what that looks like. Again, hoping the finger swipe does enough for me. So here's a pipeline. What does pipeline look like? You'll notice the flow of this application goes from left to right. Can everyone see that? Is that a good size, hopefully? Anyway, there's a, from left to right. On the left-hand side is me as a developer. I'm doing some work, I've made a pull request, and when I made a pull request, it spun up an application for me. That represents the latest changes I've made. Hopefully they're good. It's a place people can log in and they can take a look. In the center, once I've done my work on my review app, it goes from left to right. I move into the middle application. Each one of these is a Heroku app. Each one is a self-contained, a complete application with all of the elements that I have defined as part of my application. So once I'm done with my change, I'll promote it to that middle layer, and that's going to be more tests run, closer to production. It's sort of a staging before we get into production. And once that's ready, I move to my app over on the right-hand side, production. So each tile on here is gonna represent one node on my network graph in my Git repository. It's going to represent uh, one step in my process of getting something from the idea phase into the hands of my users. Now, this tool has a lot of other features to it. You notice this wonderful button, promote to production. So when I'm ready to make a, a change that's gone into staging, I'm ready to put that to production, there is a simple push button approach to do that. So rather than having to think about the metadata API or the change set UI and other things you've been dealing with on the force.com platform, with Heroku, we just click this button and everything goes straight through to the next step. Makes you kind of want that, doesn't it? Yeah, wouldn't that be great to have? That's what we thought. We thought that would be great to have. So. That is why this is going on. This is why this conversation is happening and how we're, we're, this is a tool that we're going to incorporate into force.com development. In addition, we've got tests that are integrated right here into the UI, so you can look at how tests are happening on each individual app as it goes through the process. And from these, I can drill right into any one of these and it will show me all the details about that particular app and what is a part of it. All right, Let's see if I can get the swipe to work here. So now we've seen a bit about Heroku. We understand a bit about Heroku stuff works. Uh, and you're thinking to yourself, hold on a sec. You talked about this dyno thing. You talked about spinning up an application and running that however many times I need to to represent my, my application process, to represent the, the train going forward through the deployment. Can I do that with Salesforce? Can I just run all of Salesforce locally? You're thinking to yourself, no, I, I can't do that because it's hosted in the cloud. Alternatively, you may be thinking to yourself, you mean I get to run this locally? It's gonna be awesome. Uh, unfortunately, we can't do that. There's too many technical hurdles in the way of letting this just run uh, in a local environment. So we have this, this mismatch, where the Heroku app contains all of the logic. It, it runs the Node website. It runs the Java web service. It can't run Salesforce. We can't have that run there. So we had a bit of a problem. We had to figure out how is it that we're going to be able to incorporate Salesforce org into that wonderful flow that easily diagrams out everything you need to do from day one, moving into getting your idea to production. And so for that, we created Salesforce add-on. Before I mentioned add-ons, third-party add-ons, we've decided we're going to create something to make ourselves a third-party add-on to Heroku so you can incorporate a Salesforce environment into your app. So think about what that means. If you are uh, looking at the production tile, the right-hand side, you're gonna to wanna to associate the environment that's your production work. If you're looking at that tile in the middle, in the staging, you're gonna want maybe a sandbox. Uh, if you're looking at the tiles over on the right, maybe you've got a DE org that you use, maybe a dev sandbox. The Salesforce add-on is how you're going to be able to bind that org environment into the Heroku tools. So through this add-on, we're going to be able to do it. We're going to be able to bring you into this wonderful deployment tool from the Heroku side. So it lets you incorporate it there. Uh, one org environment per Heroku app, and the key thing is that we have to make sure we get the right or connected to the right app. Uh, how are we gonna do that? I just mentioned a bunch of different kinds of uh, use cases. I mentioned a bunch of different kinds of environments, and so now I don't know how to do this. I've got 
my production org, I've got my sandbox org, I've got my development environments. I gotta figure out how to get these all connected. So for the production orgs that you use today, we've built a tool called Salesforce Environment Manager. Salesforce Environment Manager is going to be a way to organize all the different orgs that you use. So you may be working for just your one company where you've got a production org, you've got a bunch of sandboxes, maybe you've got a bunch of production orgs and a bunch of sandboxes. You may be a consultant who works for five different customers and you've got some production orgs and some sandboxes for each of those customers. You may be an ISV where you've got a whole bunch of DE orgs that you use to uh, manage your development process and put them into production. You may wear different hats and you may have, like I do, a text file with all the usernames that you need to remember for all your DE orgs and all the different things you need. Hopefully your passwords aren't in there. Don't do that. But if you've got your idea, your, your orgs in, there, uh, in, in, in some format, it's not very easily, easy to organize, especially once you start doing work for a lot of things. So we've created Salesforce Environment Manager. Salesforce Environment Manager will do that, the task uh, of, of organizing your orgs for you. Where'd I go? Too many things. There we go. I'm gonna show you from here. I can come directly from pipelines. I can click the little button here and I can look at view environment info. So from pipelines, I'm gonna jump back into this tool I was describing. Salesforce Environment Manager. On the left-hand side, a list of all the orgs that I've associated with this. On the right-hand side, to ask some information about who's logging into this and daily API calls. We're still working out all the details that are gonna be on the right. Pay more attention to the idea of what's on the left. These are my production orgs, a few uh, staging orgs I have. I may associate a DE org as well. You'll be able to associate your orgs, not orgs for your team. You're gonna say, I, as a person, I am dealing with my three DE orgs that I work on, or maybe there's another uh, customer I'm doing some uh, pro bono work for, so I've got their production org, as well as the, the, custom, uh, the company org for my main employer. My teammate may only have the orgs for the employer. They don't have the DE orgs that I'm logging into in the pro bono work I'm doing. So you'll be able to link your personal user, you as a person, the orgs you wanna see are gonna show up here, and filter them here and see them all here. This will be your jump off point. You'll be able to log into any, you click the open button up there and you'll be able to log into any org directly in the browser. So you have one stop shop to come at the beginning of the day to the orgs you wanna to go to, click on the button, I'll take you right into them. Anyone that think they can be able to use this? and want a better way to manage their orgs? So hopefully this will be helpful. Back to tying into the Heroku tools. When you bind your org here, you're gonna click on it, you're gonna say, uh, you're gonna authenticate, you're gonna type in the username and password and say I'd like the environment manager to know about this org. Behind the scenes, it's gonna create a Heroku app for you. And it's gonna add the Salesforce add-on to the app. So I showed you at the beginning that, that dashboard page. You, you might have been thinking to yourself, that's a lot to learn. I don't know this, it's purple, not blue. I only know blue, I don't know purple. So you don't have to learn all that. We're gonna take, I wanna give that as background. We're here at Dreamforce, I figured background would be good. We're gonna take a lot of that away for you. You don't have to think about that. All you're gonna do is come here, authenticate yourself to the environment manager, and we are going to create that app for you so it's ready to be incorporated into the pipeline. Pipeline you are gonna to wanna to use, that is a UI that everyone's gonna like, but if you don't want to dig into the details of the Heroku application, you're not gonna to have to do that. Later on, I'm gonna talk about why you might want to, but if all you're doing is force.com development, this will be your primary entree into it. You can skip the, the, that, that first page in the dashboard if you're not digging that deep. Here's environment manager. Beyond my production organizations and my sandbox organizations that I want to link here, there's another type of thing that I need to do, and that's do development, and that's do testing. So for that, we've created a new type of environment, which we're calling Scratchwork. So you guys heard about Scratchwork before, it was mentioned earlier. Um, what do we mean by Scratch? Not that, we don't mean that. What we mean by Scratch, not that either. Hold on a second. Definitely not that. We mean you're building from scratch. You're in a wide open green field with nothing in the, in, in the environment to begin with. This is different from how DE orgs work because they're built from the DE org template, so it's got some stuff in there already. This is different how sandboxes work because sandboxes are clones of production. So they've got all the metadata in your org. These are truly empty environments and we're going to build them from version control and populate them with the configuration of your org, uh, the type, whether it's professional edition, uh, enterprise edition, whether it's got this feature turned on or not. And we're gonna populate the configuration and you're gonna populate the metadata and data and anything you need for your use case. This is primarily gonna be used for testing, for development, and for the review apps I mentioned earlier. Scratchworks, where are they gonna live? This is a question we get. Some people think, they, again, I get to run this on my local machine. 
they're going to live in the cloud. Uh, from time to time, they'll be in different places. They will be in sandbox hardware, or they'll be in virtual hardware, depending on a variety of things. But they're going to be posted for you, and they're going to live for a very, very short amount of time. So they're going to, your use case will have uh, expiration, if you will. I'm working right now on this particular project, and when I'm done, I no longer need this environment. I'm running this set of continuous integration tests, and when I'm done with that, I no longer need it. The rest of our environment types don't have that. They've got unlimited lifespan, whether it's DERs that can live forever, or whether it's sandbox copies that live forever. These are meant to be temporary. They're meant to be used for the purpose of simply uh, spinning up to do what you need to do and then going away. This is very much like the Heroku ethos, where I can take a Heroku app, make it exist as an exact copy of the other app that I was working on, but when I'm done with that, it'll just vanish. I don't need it anymore. It's much more virtual, much more horizontally scalable, uh, and it will let you build out uh, the application much more rapidly than having to wait for some of the processes you have to wait for today. Scratchworks. Before I get into an example of how those are used, I would like to tell you also about another thing we're going to adopt from Heroku, which is the command line interface. Does anyone here use Heroku CLI? Got a couple hands. Everything you need to do in the Heroku world, you can do in a terminal, which is great for people who love to work in the terminal all day long. Uh, even for those who don't love to work in the terminal all day long, it is great because you can script things very easily if you've got a command line interface and uh, all the commands you need at the command line. So we're taking all the different APIs that you use today across the metadata API and the tooling API and the packaging API and the Apex API and the data API and the bulk API and put it all in one place. So you won't have to go dig around to find all the different things you need. So we're going to have the ability to create and manage these scratch environments. We have the ability to deploy your application and any data that's needed for your application into those environments. You'll be able to install packages because you have to do your testing once the packages are installed or if you have dependencies on the package you're building running your Apex test directly from the command line. And if you're also building something that incorporates Heroku, you can interact with Heroku in the command line as well. So the concept of the command line interface was something that's always been part and parcel of how Heroku operates. It hasn't been nearly as, uh, as much a part of force development. We're changing that. We're going to adopt this. We're going to adopt this idea, and we're going to start offering all of the functionality that you need as a developer in one place. So now I said I would, uh, I would show you some of how this works. So I think now I'm going to hop out of that entirely and come over here. So first, I can give you a bit of the command line, show you all the commands we have. I know someone's going to try to take a po uh, photo of this. Don't take a photo. You can just get the recording later. Heroku, uh, force help. So these are help force. Sorry, I got it backwards. Heroku, help force. So we've got the ability to do data imports, Apex tests, bulk imports, uh, metadata API deploy, org creation, org deletion, package install, SQL queries, and then the big ones down here is source push and source pull. This is how we're going to interact uh, with our scratch orgs. We're going to use these commands to pull from our local repository and push into the uh, org environment. So these are the current list of commands. These are going to be growing over time. So if you don't see your favorite command here, it's on its way. But all these things are now, as you see, all different APIs, bulk API, Apex API, uh, metadata API, package API, all combined into one single place. Where am I going to make use of those? So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into uh, Eclipse. So I've copied over my repository. Let me show you that first. So I've got my repository over here, very basic repository, using Git, using a standard tool. And I have copied it over here and have made a very simple Visual Force page to use. All my command line commands are here too. If you don't like the command line, you can double click. That'll work also. But let's go through the flow here uh, of how I will make changes, use the command line, and then dive into those Heroku tools with it. So I've got a very simple page here. Uh, let me open that. Let me open it and show you what I've got. I come right here and I click on Open App in Browser, launch right into my production org, and we'll see what this thing looks like. I'm on Wi-Fi. Hmm. Maybe we won't. I thought we would. Let's try the staging app and see if that one's happier. It doesn't seem like the wireless is happy with me right now. All right. We won't, oh, there we go. It came through. 
So here's the application, very simple uh, page, looks like this right here, demo page. This is for my sign up for my new gym. It's my, my P90X, it's the SFDC99. And uh, you can sign up, first name, last name. So we're gonna go and make a quick change to this because that video is a little obtrusive and we should add some more rules to it here. So here's my, uh, here's my page. I'm starting from the, from the point of, of making changes here and not trying to do it in the org. So let me add a new rule. The third rule of this, the fourth rule is something else, right? What are we gonna call the fourth rule? The fourth rule er, is never trust the Wi-Fi. Never trust the wireless. Wi-Fi, all right, so we got that there. And I can save that and I can push it into my scratch work from the command line. So I can come down here and I can go through my commands and right there, force, source, push. Now this is gonna push into a scratch environment that I've got running. Oh, I mean, it's in And I, from the command line, I've done my metadata change. Now, if I want to uh, put that into my production org, let me go here and let me do a branch. Uh, I can just commit this. Branch. Commit, demo page. I'm using uh, integration directly with Eclipse. Ah, I was using commit with Eclipse. And I will push this into my, my repository. Quick page, it's too small. I made it big so people could see it. Commit and push, message, hi. All right. Now if I come back to my repo, I can reload it. I'll see that I made a push on this branch. We'll see that I made a push on this branch. I'll do a new pull request, I hope. Switch one. And I got my pull request there. Now when I come over here, you'll see that it's spun up. Oh, this is my last pull request. You see that it's building the app right here. It's trying to spin up a review app which will show me those latest changes. So when this is done, what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to open app and browser and I'll be able to look at the changes that I made there. Once that's done, I was gonna grab this one. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me adopt this pull request and you'll see the auto build will start to happen on the left hand side here. So pull request, view the pull. And once I merge that pull request, confirm the merge, we should see over here, I've got auto deploys from master right here. So my, my, my uh, review app went away and this will start to build up in just a minute here. We'll see it start to build and uh, the latest change will be merged into production. Now if I made another change, I get another review app. About an hour ago, it's doing this, I promise. Uh, it's going very slow today. Anyway, so the idea here is this. I am now using force.com tools, uh, I'm sorry, using Heroku tools to do my development in my force.com application. Great. Uh, I've used the Eclipse plugin, which you've seen in the past, a new version of it uh, that's using command line integration, or I'm using command line, depending on what I'm most interested in doing. I'm using the concept of the Heroku app so that I can tie into Heroku CI and Heroku pipelines. And I got a new environment manager for me to go look at all the different environments I'm, uh, I'm utilizing in order to facilitate the deployment process. So as it's building the app here, we won't uh, watch it build the app. Uh, it is building the latest version. I do wanna go back to one more slide in the deck, which is the, uh, the bonus round. So you're all working on force.com, everything uh, you, perhaps you're not, perhaps you've done some Heroku development as well. Uh, our platform is bigger than just force.com. Our platform includes all those wonderful things I talked about at the beginning. It includes being able to write Java. It includes being able to write Node uh, and to incorporate that into a single application. And we call that application the App Cloud. The App Cloud is the best of both worlds. It's the ability to take the functionality you need from either place and do the thing that it's most suited to do. Force.com platform is wonderful for uh, relational applications. Apex is tightly bound to your data model and it's part of the transaction and has uh, automatic rollback when things go wrong. Heroku lets you take existing resources. You may have a credit score application that you've already built. You don't wanna rewrite that in Apex if it's already tested and it's already bulletproof in Java. So you can go ahead and put that out into the Heroku platform and incorporate it in to your global app cloud application. So on the force side, you've got Lightning and Apex, and Heroku, you've got the languages. We have a new pilot called External Services. External Services, in some ways, if you're familiar with how WSDL to Apex works, it will replace what WSDL to Apex does. You'll be able to say, here's my service definition running in the Heroku world. Please take that and do something with it. The platform will ingest that and it will surface it to you in multiple places. It won't just create a giant Apex class that's got the, the connections. It will give you a method in Apex. My, my service dot, my, my function name, and then the parameters you need to pass. 
behind the scenes, Apex will take care of all the work to build the boilerplate, uh, boilerplate that builds the message, uh, the payload, sends it out. It will wait for the message to come back, it will unpack it, and it will return it to you as a simple variables, so you don't have to do all that work on your own. In addition to being available in Apex, those same services will be surfaced in uh, Process Builder. So you add them into invocable actions, you can add them into process flows, and you can add them into uh, your declarative logic. So we're kind of replacing the Wizzle to Apex functionality, which was a DIY type of solution, and replacing it with external services, which will be much more automated, much simpler, and uh, more comprehensive. When you've got an application like this, now think about what that means. Think of the implications. You've got uh, this Java service that you've been using for 20 years, and you don't want to rebuild it. You run that on Heroku, and it's now part of your application. And you connect it to your force application and put the calls in at the right times. That's all one bundle. That's all going to be one app, one of those Heroku apps. And you're going to be able to modify that thing at, as a unit and move it through the chain. So if you want to change the service definition, you change the service definition and whatever's calling that service to meet the new service definition, and you submit that as a change, and it shows up as a review app in that right-hand column. And once you're done with that, you say uh, accept pull request, and that will rebuild that review app in the middle column. And when that happens, uh, you promote that directly to your production app. And you're going to promote all of these things in lockstep. So your org is going to be updated, and your Heroku code is going to be up updated all at the same time. So the things are going to happen in concert, tandem, one by one, not as two separate things, not trying to manage them with two different teams saying, oh, you've got to build this, and you have to build this, as one app cloud application. So this will really unlock some of the potential that the Heroku platform has had to offer for many, many years. It's been a little bit difficult. There's been barriers. People haven't understood what the purpose of it was and what it could be used for. Now that we're using the tools, now that we're using the same constructs that, that Heroku uses to do its deployments, hopefully this will open this up to people. And people will see the, the, the different possibilities that are available beyond force.com on our app cloud platform. So, with that, I will bring it back around. Salesforce DX is going to bring you the tools you've needed for years. I've needed for years. We've needed for years. Finally going to give them, make these things possible in a way uh, that, that would be easy to understand. In fact, last year, I sat at the developer keynote and watched the presentation on, on, on Heroku Pipelines and said, if we only had that, life would be so, so much better. We now have a developer preview of exactly what I showed you, of the uh, of pipelines working with force.com applications, so we can take advantage of the wonderful tooling that we have uh, affiliated with Heroku. Environment Manager, dashboard and pipelines, plus a command line interface, new environments for you to use for the proper use cases, and ways to connect to Heroku services to do more than you're capable of doing on the platform today. All right, and with that, I want to open up for questions because I figured you guys have tons based on what we saw earlier today. So is there, we have a microphone off, we have a microphone or not? I'll just repeat questions if not. So uh, we'll go with hands, I guess. Right here, questions, sir. Can you spin up a sandbox today? No, yes, that is something we're going to add. You'll be able to refresh and create sandboxes in the command line interface. That is something we're working on. Other questions about DX in general, about the tools you just saw? Hands, I saw a few more hands. Where'd they go? Hmm. How does Heroku affect the trust side of things if data flows off the platform into Heroku from a you know, the legal point of view or many points of view? Sure. It's, it, it is the equivalent today of making a call out, in effect, right? So if you're making a call out or if you've built a, a web portal that's using Salesforce as the back end for that and it's kind of drawing data from it. So it's not running on our app servers. It's running in the Heroku uh, uh, window. But with, uh, with their private spaces, some of the, the, the security work they're doing, that's almost almost the same level as the Salesforce platform. But they are independent from that perspective, but yeah, is that, hopefully that answers. Okay, more questions? Others back there in the middle. Uh, how much of uh, DX is available right now? Uh, it depends who you are. Uh, it's available to me because I'm working on it. Uh, we're having a developer preview, which is uh, for folks who understand that things are uh, working but not complete. There's a lot of setup that's difficult to do. Uh, that there's, there's, there's no trailhead modules for it just yet. It's very much you have to figure it out kind of as you're going along still. We're in kind of those stages. We're working on having pilot uh, and beta available next year during the year. So that's the goal.
Uh, but right now it is available. We're having a developer preview with people who are giving us feedback and helping us hone and helping us make it more complete. More questions? Hands. There's no questions. I was the other questions. I stopped early too. Uh, we're going to, my manager is available today. We're going to try to uh, release everything all at one time to make sure that uh, everything, we don't want to be making changes to something we've, we've given to you that make whatever you were doing before incompatible. So we're going to, there's I think six or seven different products in effect that we're going to be releasing all at once. Uh, it's easier than trying to, to cycle it through. So the environment manager, it, it, we did talk about that because there's a couple of things that and a couple of like some of the command line stuff we could just release out of you know early out of band, but rather than that, we'd rather wait till pilot when mostly everything is ready. Next year. Yeah, we're looking at early next year. When I say next year, we're not talking about Dreamforce. Uh, we're talking about earlier next year. So, okay, other other questions? Oh, there we go. So uh, everyone who works on Salesforce should start using Heroku. Uh, because, Sorry, say it again. As someone uh, on Salesforce an, anyone who works on Salesforce, should they start using Heroku? I work on Salesforce and Lightning. Should I be using Heroku? It depends on your use case. It depends what you're attempting to do. Uh, as I mentioned before, the platform is great. The four-step platform and Lightning platform are wonderful for a variety of different use cases. So if you, like I said, relational applications and you know, data-driven applications are super easy on the platform. That's why I think a lot of us doing what we're doing and being here at the conference, because it makes it so easy to get your logic built. Uh, if you have things that start getting difficult to do and you start saying, well, Apex doesn't accomplish that, or Lightning as a UI framework is limited for these reasons. Once you get to those limitations, that's when you start to, to say, ah, I might want to move something out, out of the platform. But it takes a long time to get to those, those limitations. The other primary use case is existing, pre-existing functionality. So if you've already got a website that you're running uh, that you don't want to rebuild in Lightning because it's already branded, already looks like your company, it's already tested, that's the kind of uh, thing you want to think you don't necessarily have to port over to the platform. You can put it into the Heroku side of the App Cloud. Okay. Questions, more, more, more. It's opportunity. Okay. Is that a hand? No. All right. We have one more question there? Sorta? Uh, yeah, so yesterday I built uh, well, in a workshop uh, a little app that used Heroku Connect. Um, basically to build a little app that easily connected to Salesforce. Yep. So now you're going to have Salesforce Connect to, do the, to go the it's other way? Be, well, we're, it's, I call it Salesforce Connect. It's external services. So Heroku Connect is to pull data out from Salesforce into Heroku. So if you're doing, if your use case is number processing and you want to do the end of month, uh, I don't know, uh, ledger accounting, you want to pull data out, Heroku Connect is good for that. This is if you're running a force application and want to make a connection over to the Heroku side, so kind of the opposite direction. Uh, but yeah, both have their use at different times. Okay. All right, folks, thank you so much. And I look forward to uh, delivering all this Salesforce DX to you over the course of the next year and getting your feedback. Thank you.